Hi, we're going to take the first look at solving quadratic simultaneous equations. Before we get on with this, you need to make sure you're fairly confident with solving quadratics by factorising and also solving simultaneous equations by substitution. I'll try and link to both those videos in case you need a bit of a fresher on that. Okay, so this method is used for solving this type of problem. So you've got a simultaneous equation, you've got two equations, however, one of them will contain an x squared or a y squared or both of those terms. So let's get started. This follows pretty much the same steps that we looked at for solving simultaneous equations by substitution. So here at step one, we're going to replace y in equation two with what it equals in equation one. So we know y equals x, which means I can rewrite this as x squared plus x equals six. Now I have an equation just in terms of x, I'm going to solve it. Whenever you solve a quadratic, it must equal 0. So x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. And all of these all of these today, we're going to solve or can be solved by factorising. So let's do that now. We should have this worked by now. We have a minus sign here, that's fairly key. That means I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 6, but I want their difference to be how many x's we have. Again, there's no number, means there is a one there. This is gonna be three and two. So therefore, this will factorize into x plus three, x minus two equals zero, which gives me two solutions. So again, this is different from just normal ones. Because there's an x squared term, you will always get two solutions. Very rarely, it'll be the same solution twice, but so you're looking to find two solutions. So my first solution I'm going to call x1 is minus 3. My second solution I'm going to call x2 is going to be 2. And now we need to find both their corresponding y solutions. So if you've got two x solutions, you're going to find two y solutions. And they're going to come in pairs. Uh, so right back to the start, we saw that y equals x. So that means y1 will equal x1 and y2 will equal x2. This one's fairly straightforward. y one's going to be minus 3, and y2 is going to be 2. And therefore, we've solved. Also, make sure for your answer, you make it clear that you have two pairs of solutions. So basically, what you don't want is this y solution mixing with this x solution, because that is not a valid solution. OK? I'll try one more slightly harder. So I've given the same basic steps. After a while, it should become sort of second nature what you need to do. First step, I need to rewrite a form of x equals. Again, we picked x because there's only one of them. If this was 2x minus y, we would then go for y equals instead. So let's do that. I want to get rid of the minus 2y. Opposite of minus 2y is plus 2y. And again, I always want my y's at the front, which is a good habit to get into. Next, we need to replace x in equation 2 with what we've just worked out, x equals. So we've got two lots of x, so this is going to be two lots of 2y plus 4 plus y squared equals 29. And now we need to solve this. So first thing I have to do is I've got to expand this bracket out. So that is going to give me 4y plus 8 plus y squared equals 29. Solving any quadratic, uh, some basic rules, it must equal 0. And you always want y squared first, then y, and then any numbers. So I'm going to do both of those two things. So y squared goes to the front, then I've got my y's, and I want to get rid of this 29. So I need to take it away, and if I do 8 take away 29, that is going to be minus 21 equals 0. Okay, now we've got to factorise it. Again, we have a minus here. When you've got a minus here, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you 21, and we've got a plus 4 here, so you want their difference to be 4. Working this out, again, you always look for what numbers multiply to make 21, and the pair that works is 7 and 3. Okay, so that means it is going to factorise. If we look at this one here, we're going to have y plus 7 and y minus 3. So y plus 7, y minus 3. That all equals zero, which means we can get our two solutions for y. My first solution, y1, 
is going to be equal minus 7. And my second solution, y2, is going to equal 3. Now we've done that, we need to go to my earlier equation to work out the values of x. Again, I can use equation 1, but it's slightly easier to just use the rearranged form instead, although both of them will work. So x equals 2y plus 4. That means x1 will equal 2 lots of y1 plus 4. And the same thing with x2 and y2. And now we just plug them in. So x1 is going to be 2 lots of minus 7, which is minus 14 plus 4. So x1 equals minus 10. And again, that's one pair of solutions. These two always stick together. And I do the same thing over here. x2 is going to be 2 lots of 3, which is 6. Which means x2 is 10. And this is my other pair of solutions. That's it. A lot of skills get merged here together. So take your time and make sure you're confident with each skill with each step before you sort of try the questions for real. Okay, you've got some questions to try. Feel free to pause and give it a go. Just like in the sim equations video, I've given you the steps for the first few questions, but then for the latter ones, I've let you figure out what to do by yourself. Okay, so hopefully by then, you should have a rough idea of what you need to do. Okay, I'll show the answers included in the steps for questions one and three, and hope they make sense to you. So question one was a slightly easier one. Replace y, uh, make sure you spell the bracket correctly, so I go off and C, and then go from there. Question three, same idea, so I have to rewrite x equals 2y plus 5 first before I plug it all in. And that gives my pairs of solutions. Okay, I hope that made sense to you. Good luck, and I hope you find it fairly straightforward.